Welcome to part 6 of Let's Play Creature of Havoc by Steve Jackson. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 448. Uh, let's read it again as a recap. Exhausted from your battle, your attentions turn to the white-haired creature lying moaning on the ground. Seeing that the battle is over and that you mean him no harm, he turns towards you. As he speaks to you, he winces in pain from his beating. I offer you, ah, my thanks for your aid. My name is Ooh, his white leaf. I am, uh, an elf. Home for me is the village of Ethel Amin. He turns over onto his back and continues. Ah, that's better. Um, I know these woods well. Um, perhaps I can be of service to you in return. What would you like him to tell you? Anything he knows about Stittlewode? Turn to 58. What he knows of the galley keep? Turn to 269. More about himself? Turn to 167. Okay, we're going to ask him about the galley keep, so turn to 269. There we are. White Leaf spits in contempt. The ground is cursed where that ogre-breathed spirit Zaradan Mar treads, he snarls. It is my wish that the wind drop suddenly and he drop with it. Um, to his death. Mar has sailed the accursed galley keep all his life with its foul crew of bloodlusting beast men. Someone should sabotage the floating hell pit by holding its hull. I know how to get aboard. The galley keep comes to ground not far from here, just off to the west, when the wind dies down. Nothing would please me more than to see the accursed vessel plummet from the sky and crash to the ground, killing all on board. Uh, the elf finally picks himself off the ground and dusts down his robes. He thanks you again and leaves. Turn to 414. However, we're not going to do that. We're going to, uh, we're going to use the ring of truth that we have. And if we have a look here, it says Ring of Truth, um, deduct 50 from paragraph. So we're going to deduct 50 from 269 to get to 219 and turn to there. Here we are. Uh, you hold up your Ring of Truth before him and his tone changes. He shifts nervously from side to side. Uh, perhaps I have not remembered things quite accurately, he stammers. It is not true that the galley keep comes that the galley keep comes to ground near here. It hardly ever comes to ground, for then it is too vulnerable. There are only two ways that I know of to get on board the galley keep. Every day the ship goes gathering food for the crew. I have seen their catapult traps, which are scattered all around these woods. If you get yourself caught in a trap, you will be hoisted on board. Um, all over the forest... Um, all over the forest they are. Alternatively, you can search for Thugruff's testing grounds and have yourself recruited into the crew. Weasel Tongue backs away from you uh, across the clearing. Um, I uh, suspect, he stammers, that you wish to find Zaradan Mar and you wish me to help. Um, that I cannot. His face makes a grimace as he glances at the ring. Of course, I must tell you what I know, for the Ring of Truth was forged by Elven Smiths. If meet Zaradan, you must. You will you will find him on the galley keep in a room with a certain symbol on the door. I know not this symbol, but I do have a clue as to its nature, contained in the words of this rhyme. When fire meets ice, who ends the fight? Who stands between the two? His symbol keeps them both apart, not red, nor white, but blue. I know no more that will help you, he adds hastily, and now I must be going. He holds up he holds up his hands his hand as a parting gesture and turns into the woods. You watch him go. Ahead the path continues to the north, but you can see through the trees that it splits, one path heading to the east and the other to the west. Do you want to head north and then turn either to the east, two hundred and seventy turn to two hundred and seventy two, or the west, turn to one hundred and thirty nine? Or would you rather ignore the path and set off through the undergrowth, turn to one hundred and eighty nine? Um, we are going to set off into the undergrowth, so turn to 189. Uh, you leave the clearing and stomp off through the undergrowth. Birds twitter excitedly as you crash through the woods, and you turn your head up to watch them. Far in the distance you see a black shape hovering in the sky. 
It is too large to be a bird and has none of the familiar shapes of a flying creature. The galley keep. Um, you remember Weasel Tongue's words, but how will you? But how will you ever be able to find a hidden trap among all the trees? Test your luck. If you are lucky, you turn to 341. If you are unlucky, you turn to 376. Okay, so apparently if we fail this, it goes, we test it again, and then if we fail that, it's death. So uh, luckily we have 11 luck points still, so, so we need this to be less than or equal to 11. Yep, good, uh, 9. Get, get rid of the buzzing. Okay, we've used a luck point, so we have to deduct one from... Our luck score, there we are. Okay, so we were lucky, so 10 to 341. There we are. As you search through the woods on your seemingly hopeless task, the ship in the sky is becoming larger. It is coming your way. You begin to thrash about in frustration, but just then you see what you were looking for. Ahead of you, appearing much too obvious now, you have spotted it appearing much too obvious now you have spotted it, is a tall, slender tree bent back on itself. A galley keep hunting trap. You pick yourself up and stare at the device. The tree, a whipwood, has been shaved of its branches. Its tip is held taut by a rope which ends in a ring. You study it until you are sure that you can understand how it works. You wait, watching the slow arrival of the galley keep. At a suitable time, you spring the trap. Uh, the tree snaps upwards and you are hoisted through the air until you hang loosely at treetop level. You are helpless. Your only hope is that the galley keep crew see you and pull you on board. Uh, the ship gets nearer. As the dark shape looms above you, a long pole reaches out over the side and pulls you up through the air. Your plan is working. Sharp claws scratch at your scales as the hands of dark, foul-smelling creatures pull you up and over the side of the boat and drop you in a heap on the deck. Playing dead, you gather your strength and wait for a suitable moment to spring into action. Two pairs of rough hands grasp your shoulders and hoist you along the deck towards a guillotine, whose blade is poised and ready to drop. At that moment, you make your move. You pull yourself to your feet and fling your two guards over the side of the ship. Two burly goblins step forward with short swords. You must resolve this battle. The creatures attack together. Okay, so we have first goblin, um, which is six, uh, which is skill six and stamina five. Second goblin, uh, skill five, stamina five. So, so we have two goblins, whoops, uh, six, five, and five, five. Okay, first goblin. Uh, six, five, and we have to fight them together, but don't forget, of course, um, that if we get a double, we have to, well, uh, that we kill them immediately. Um, someone did point out to me that uh, that I did uh, that, that I did forget when I was fighting the brigands. I think um, I could have killed them earlier because I did get a double but I wasn't paying attention. There are so many things to notice in this game and as I always say in, in the previous in the previous books I've done, as long as I don't make it easier for myself I'm happy. If if I make a mistake and it actually made and it, and it actually made it more difficult for me, I don't mind so much as long as I don't make it easier for myself. Okay, so, so if I didn't notice that, that I got a double, it just made it harder for me, so it doesn't matter too much as long as I still you know, complete the game. Uh, anyway, so we're fighting them together. Um, so we roll for him first, he's 6 and I'm 11 still, 6 plus 8 is 14 and I get uh, 16, so 14 to 16, uh, no I didn't get a, a thing, yeah 14 to 16, wait a minute, 6, yeah, six plus 8 is 14 and 11 plus 5 is 16, so that'd be 3 plus the 5, wait what, sorry I'm being really stupid here, right, he got 8, that's 14, and I got 5, that's 11 plus 5 is 16, okay, right. I'm, I'm sorry, I've been, I've, 
make any sense. I was trying to wonder why I only just beat him when I'm a lot higher than he is, five more than he is. I don't know. Okay, so 14 to 16. Uh, yeah, the music goes down to three. Okay, next one. Whoops, next one. He gets. Oh, yeah, I have to roll for the other one as well, don't I? That one is um, five plus eight, which is thirteen. So thirteen for the first uh, for this one, so he doesn't hurt me. And an NA for this one. There we go. Um, yeah, so I didn't get hurt. Right. Okay, next. Okay, um, 6 plus 2 is 8, 8 to 18, so beat him again, he goes down to 1, just one more hit now, oh yeah, I have to roll for the other one, don't I, um, he gets a 6, so 6 plus 5 is 11, so he gets 11, and he, that's another NA for me. Let me just copy that. There we go. Okay, one more, uh, one more for him. Hopefully then. Okay, uh, six plus four is ten, so ten to seventeen. And that's the end of him. But we still have to roll for the other one. Uh, five plus three is eight, so he gets an eight. So he doesn't hurt me either. Not much chance he was going to, really, to be honest. Okay, now we're just fighting the other one. So 5 plus 8 is 13. 13 to 18. Whoops. Okay, next. Um, 5 plus 9 is 14. 14 to... 17, so that's not a double. 14 to 17. Um, yep, 14 to 17. So he's down to 1 now. Been really unlucky with the dice rolls today. It's a good job I have loads more. Um, loads more. Uh, loads more skill. Um, Okay, last one then, hopefully. 5 plus 5 is 10, and I get 20, so 10 to 20. And that's the end of the second goblin. Okay, so we're done. Uh, the two goblins are dead. Get rid of the buzzing. Okay. Um, if you defeat the goblins, 10 to 312. Yep, we've defeated them. There we are. Uh, the commotion on deck has attracted the attention of other creatures. You can hear the sounds of footsteps and a cacophony of growling voices getting closer. You had better hide. Ahead of you is a door leading from the deck, and you step through and close it behind you. You find yourself at the top of a staircase uh, leading, down into the sh leading down into the ship. You carefully descend until you find yourself in a circular hallway with five doors leading from it. Behind you, the voices are shouting angrily on the deck above. They will soon be following you down the stairs, so you had better choose a safer hiding place in the hallway. Each of the doors has a symbol on it. To your immediate left, the symbol is a jug from which water is pouring. The symbol on the, on the next door is a is a burning fire. The next door has the symbol of a crown, the next a delicate snowflake, and finally the door to your right has a battle symbol on it. Two cross swords painted in blue. Which will you choose? The jug of water, 10 to 346. The fire, 10 to 29. The crown, 10 to 129. The snowflake, 10 to 158. The cross swords, 10 to 111. None of these, 10 to 302. Let's have a look. Oh, uh, there's a shadow. There's a shadow of me. Okay, so there's the jug, the fire, the crown, the uh, the snowflake, apparently that's a snowflake, and the cross swords. Okay, so which one are we going to choose? Okay, we are going to choose the jug of water, so 346.
The door opens and you step into a dingy room. Dust and cobwebs have begun to settle over the furniture, and the curtains uh, and the curtains over the portholes are drawn. The room itself has an unmade bed against one wall. A wardrobe door yawns half open, um, rocking as the galley keep sways and revealing elegant uniforms now beginning to look a little dusty. Um, you get a li- you get a sudden fright when you see a creature staring at you, but relax when you realise it is only your, it is only your reflection in a full-length mirror which hangs to the side of the wardrobe. Further around the room, there is a desk covered in charts and maps, one of which protrudes from a folder marked for captain's eyes only. A spiral staircase to one side of the desk ascends to another hatchway which is closed. As you are making your way, making your way around the room. Um, you get another fright when you bump into a long, thin, brass-trimmed device which stands on three legs and points out of the window. There is no one in the room, nor does it look as though it has been used recently, but you might as well investigate the contents. Which will you start with? The wardrobe, 10 to 59. The mirror, 10 to 422. Uh, uh, the desk, 10 to 246. The spiral staircase, 10 to 270. The brass trim device, 10 to 225. Okay, we're going to start with uh, the mirror, 422. There we are. Uh, the mirror has an ornate gold frame, but otherwise appears to be an ordinary full sized mirror. Um, you consider smashing the mirror, but it is possible that the noise may alert the crew to your whereabouts. Turn to 302. Suddenly, you stop what you are doing and listen. Your ears have picked up a sound outside the door. Shh, hisses one voice. We must surprise the creature, whatever it is. Remember what it has done to the gatherers. Get ready. Earth, water, fire, and air. At that moment, the door cracks, bursts from its lock, and crashes back against the wall to reveal a sea of ugly faces. Uh, Straining to lunge forward at you. Take the creature, comes the cry, and they flood forward, bellowing their battle cries. You have no chance against this horde of hobgoblins, and your adventure has ended here. However... (laughs) However, there is a clue that we can use here. That's what I'm reading on the instructions here. It says, the clue that I have written down says, use biography clue for, and I'm not reading this from this thing, I'm reading it from the, uh, reading it from my instructions, which you can't see. Um, Use biography clue 422 minus 93 equals 229 Go to paragraph 329. Okay, so... Excuse me one moment. Okay, sorry about that. Um, apparently what I'm supposed to do is go... Is I wasn't supposed to turn to 302. I'm supposed to look into the mirror which is this one, 422, where I was before. And it just says in the instructions that I have to use biography clue 422 minus 93 equals 329. I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, I do not know why that needs to be, where they got the number 93 from. It just says use biography clue. And it says 422 minus 93 equals 329. So I'm going to paragraph 329 for some reason. But you're not actually supposed to actually um, turn to 302 there, because it obviously leads to death, which is what you just saw. Okay, here's paragraph 329. This is what the instructions tell me to do. At last, the pieces of the puzzle fit together. You step up to the mirror and stare into the glass. You are You are looking not at your own image, but deeper. Within seconds, your uncertainty disappears as a reflection of your own shape begins to fade and something gradually takes its place. From the depths of the misty netherworld, which the necromancer now makes his sanctuary, the awesome form of Zaradan Ma takes shape before you. 
As the mist clears, you can make out that Ma is sitting behind a desk in what seems to be a library of some kind. Books are scattered across the desk, along with mystical artifacts and demonic idols, which, are, which also decorate the tall chair he is seated in. Zaradan Ma himself appears to be either deep in thought or asleep. A shiver of fear runs down your spine. A feeling of danger sets your heart pounding, and you cannot help but just stare at the necromancer. His very form seems to exude a power which is so strong you can almost feel it. At once his eyes flick open. Uh, you jump back as his fiery pupils, like two burning coals, pierce your soul with their stare. His lower lip curls down to reveal sharp, biting teeth, and a sinister hissing sound comes from his mouth. So, speaks Ma, with a voice that resounds in your ears. Like the salmon fish, my creation returns to its home, drawn by the forces of nature. Ha, you have done well. And you have brought my prize. You look puzzled. Ah, yes, my fearsome friend, he chuckles. It is no accident that you stand before me on the galley keep. Yours was my finest moringa, and it has been a complete success. Um, not only have you proved to be a perfect creature to replicate as my personal legionnaires, but your mind is as sharp as your muscles are strong. You have passed every test from escaping my dungeons to finding your way into the galley keep, and you have safely returned to me the vapour. Ma seems, Ma seems to delight in revealing his plan, rather as a father would to his son. When we first met, you were, you were my captive. Uh, they, that they, you deserve no charity, I was merciful. Rather than have you slaughtered, I offered you a choice. Either you were to serve me, or, were, or you were to become a subject for my own Maranga experiments. You chose never to serve under me, and thus your fate was decided. As a token of respect, I reserved for you my most ambitious experiment. You dwell on his words. You cannot remember ever having met Zaradan Ma before, and why should and why should he have respect for you? Turn to 121. Yeah, if anyone can tell me why I have to subtract 93 from that paragraph number, I'd be really grateful to know, but that's what the instructions told me to do. And I did say I haven't actually done this book before. I'm just reading the the route here from some instructions I got off uh, online. Um, you can probably find them in the set yourself, actually. Um, it just says, use biography clue, 422 minus 93 equals 329. Go to paragraph 329. That's all it says. I don't know what that means. I imagine it's something in this book that I should have written down before, which is really cryptic, but I didn't bother writing it down because it didn't sound me to write it down. Um, I did try searching the book uh, for words containing mirror or 93, but I didn't come up with anything. Now, the necromancer continues. I have been developing Moranga for many years now. Previously, my successes have been limited to vermin, rats to jib-jibs, mice to grawnies, and the like. You and your colleagues were my first successes with higher animals. Never before had I managed to transmute a human and into such a fine creature as you will doubtless agree. You are shocked into a stunned silence. A human? And what of these colleagues that Ma, um, of whom Mar is speaking? My experiments at least the ones which survive, are carefully studied and then preserved in a dungeon beneath the village of Coven. All my creations are sent there so that we can assess their abilities. You and your crew were transported there. Your crew? What does he mean? Thoughts are racing through your mind. Some are vague and others are being sparked off as your memory is jolted by his words. Your eyes dart round the room, at the desk, the bed, the wardrobe. It is all starting to come back. Ma smiles slyly. I see it as... Start again. I see it is coming back to you now, he continues. You recognise this room. A little dusty now, and a little untidy, but it is as you left it. Your head is spinning. Everything around you is now so familiar. I regret that your officers have not fared so well. Remember Lig, the first mate? He took the form of a blood orc and was placed in charge of the blind fool Hanicus. And Bergen, the cook? You ran into him soon enough. The fat man was... Oh, blimey. Uh, the fat man was transformed into a hobbit. He joined up with a shaman and a strong arm. I think you will remember running into them. By now you are in a state of utter confusion as your past comes, comes back to you. And after all this time you are back in your own private quarters. Turn to 199. Uh, 
Ma's eyes open wider and he leans forward. His head protrudes from the mirror as if it were a pool of water held onto the wall by magic. Now I can help you, um, but you must give me the half-orc's knapsack. What can he want with Grog's knapsack? It contains only a few of the creature's possessions and a box. Of course, the box. You now remember that you have seen similar boxes twice before. Once just before you found you were developing control of your destiny, and again just before... You just before you started to be able to understand the languages of other creatures. Perhaps this box is what he is after. Ma holds his hand out, and it too emerges from the mirror into the room. Um, Velasca Rue has failed me, he says, for the galley keep has not enabled us to find the elf village. There was only one way to test the powers of the of the vapours, to use them on a living creature. I care little for the power of reason or the power of languages, as these are skills I already have. It was much more profitable to allow you to use these vapours. But the vapour of life is mine. Give it to me. Will you give him the box as he wishes? If so, turn to 74. If you refuse, turn to 133. Um, we are going to refuse, of course. So 133. Mars' eyes open wide, but you may not refuse. His anger is mounting, for I am your creator. You may not defy me. Do you not think that, if my power is sufficient to create you, it is also sufficient to punish you? Very well. I'll give you a glimpse of the living hell I may make you suffer. His eyes roll backwards, and he mumbles a few incomprehensible words, pointing his hands out of the mirror at you. You wait apprehensively to see what happens. Did you bathe in the magical elven dust? If so, turn to 417. If not, turn to 16. Okay, we did bathe in it, if I remember, because it says, um, we have been sprinkled with elven dust. So let's go to 417. Ma casts his spell, but it has no effect. A startled look appears on his face, and he searches his memory for a way he could be immune to his magic. Of course, he nods finally. The, the chatter matter failed to entice you. That incompetent fool, Hanukkah. His instructions were to keep the elven dust walled in. Nevertheless, I am sure... I'm sure that your little act of defiance will be reconsidered in view of the riches I may offer you. But you have other ideas. It is now your turn it is now your turn to attack, and you have decided on your target. You will not go for the necromancer himself, but for his mirror. If you have with you a crystal club, turn to twenty eight, otherwise turn to hundred and fifty two. Do we have a crystal club? Um Where's his crystal club? There it is, Crystal Club. Paragraph 333. There we are. Turn to 28. If you picked up a Crystal Club during your adventure, you will have been given a reference number to turn to should you wish to use it. Do not turn to this number now, but instead add it to the number of this reference. Turn to the reference corresponding to this total. Okay, so 28 plus 300, it was 333. 28 plus 333 equals 361. So 361, but I can't resist actually going to 333 first to see what happens there. You grasp your crystal club and swing it at your opponent's head, blah, blah, blah. Ah, uh, the force of the blow shatters the club. Yeah, if you use the club, it, um, it shatters, so you won't be able to use it anyway. That's what happens if we use the club, but we're not supposed to use it until now. So, anyway, 361. You pick up your club and step towards the mirror. Yeah, I didn't actually use it, so... Um, did I use it? No, I didn't. I did say something had been given away. That was the... Uh, that was the dull metal pendant... Uh, pendant, rather. Yeah, crystal club we haven't used. Okay, you pick up your club and step towards the mirror. When Zaradan Ma sees your weapon, his confident manner becomes a little nervous. So, my offspring of Maranga, he says, though perhaps a little too eagerly, you choose to turn against your creator. Do not be hasty. Let me first tell you of my plans for us. Whatever future you wish, it can be achieved. Turn to 460. 460, here we come. Here we are. Our partnership will be supreme in Alansia. 
and together we shall rule. If it is rich as you desire, then you shall have all the wealth you can use. If your lust is for power, then I shall give you Western Landia as your own empire. His words are spilling out with mounting anxiety. But you are not listening. Instead, you are preparing to swing your club. Do I waste my words, he screams? Then think on this. If I should be lost, how will you re regain your former self? Will you be content to, to remain a beast for the rest of your days, constantly feared, hated, and even hunted by your own kind? Excuse me one moment. Sorry about that. This time his words stop you. You consider them. Should he disappear forever, perhaps you will spend the rest of your days banished from civilization, an enemy of your own race. But then what guarantee do you have that Mars' experiments are reversible? None. You glance back up at him just in time to catch him wiping the smile from his face. He has been playing for time. His image is disappearing. Furiously, you grab your club. Your eyes narrow. You grit your teeth. A low growl comes from deep in your throat. As Mars' image fades, you move quickly. In a trice, you have grabbed the club and swung it. The room is filled with the sound of breaking glass as the mirror shatters into tiny fragments before you. The portal from his land of limbo has been destroyed. He may never return to your world. You turn towards the door. A bolt of pain shoots up from your foot. You have cut yourself on a splinter from the glass, but this should not be. The thick scales on your feet should not be scratched by such tiny fragments. You look down, and then you realize what has happened. Your greeny brown scaly foot is no more. Instead, the foot is pale skinned and vulnerable. The claws have gone too. Your hands have returned to their human form. And when you look at your reflection in a fragment of mirror left hanging in the frame, a familiar face stares back wide eyed at you. Mars experiments were performed by sorcery, not surgery, and when he disappeared, the spell was broken. As your memory returns, you remember the bitter struggle high over the Moonstone Hills when Zaradan Mar and his winged Tuki forces bore down on your galley keep in overwhelming numbers. Like a raging storm cloud, the dark Tuki, especially bred race of war griffins, swooped down on the ship, their mounted blood orc arches raining arrows and killing many of your crew. The surprise attack was so quick and so deadly that you had no option but to surrender. As Zaradan Mar stepped down off his own richly adorned Tuki onto the deck of the galley keep, you swore you would avenge this defeat, but Mar had other plans for you. The tables have now now been turned, you are back in your position as commander of the galley keep. Mars' brainless creatures will respect your authority. Though Mar may have shown you a mercy of sorts, you in turn gave him the mercy he deserved. None. And that's the end of that. That's the end of the book. So, I apologise for not knowing how I managed to get to paragraph 329 from the quote-unquote biography clue um I'm just gonna look something up i mean i didn't when told to grab down yeah i did that one didn't i i did the grabbing daramoose thing i did the club thing dull metal pendant piece of hide i did that one Deduct 192, page number above from reference, when I find entrance to Mars Netherworld. Was that the thing? Was it deducting 192? But I didn't deduct 192, I deducted 93. Deduct 192, the page number above from the reference when I find... Was that it? Because that was the entrance to Mars Netherworld. So maybe it was 192 and not 93. Was that... I'm sure it said 192, though, because I, I would have written it down properly. Let's, tr let's have a look at... Um, 422... Minus 192 is... Well, 322... 222 plus 8, isn't it? So it's 200, that would be 230. 422, I'll just check that on my calculator. I don't trust myself anymore. 422 minus 192. Yeah, 230, I was right, of course. Uh, no question of it, was there? Uh, yeah, 230. Let's try 230. 
Your vengeance on the claw beast is not yet complete. Uh, uh, that's rubbish, isn't it? Let's go to 192. Maybe that will give me a clue. It must have been a mistake. Okay, right, uh, let me just check something. Um, no, no, that's, that's nothing. There was a biography. I remember there was a biography thing. I read something that had to be translated or something. I remember that. Because I remember looking up. It said it said the paragraph above. So it's 192. I'm just looking for something. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it was the the message says this is the message on paragraph 192. Biography of Zed Mar, page 93. Oh, it wasn't. Oh my God! I know what I've done wrong. That wasn't a mistake. Oh my God! I know what I've done. P um, pardon the blasphemy. Biography of Zed Mar, page 93. Thus came Mar to abandon the physical world and take refuge in his own, a strange netherworld which occupies no space in the world we mortals know, a world of illusion in which, where he appears to be, he is not. And, what does it say? In which, where he appears to be, is not, and a world in which those searching for him would instead find themselves. He has but one weakness in his new world, and that is a crystal club which may be used to destroy forever the gateway between our world and his. And then it says, it reads rather, if at some time in the future you believe you have located the entrance to Mars Netherworld, deduct the page number above from the reference you are on at the time and turn to this reference. If you are correct, you will meet the necromancer for having the good fortune to find this parchment. You may restore your luck score to its initial level. Yeah, it wasn't this. It wasn't 192. It was 93. It was the page number on the actual parchment, not in the book. How stupid of me. Well, it should have been clearer. It should have been clearer. It said page number above. But then it, I did say at the time, I remember saying in the video that I made, that it's not a page, it's a paragraph. But maybe it's... I was confused then, but it was ni page 93. So I was supposed to deduct 93 from there. Hence, when I was on 422... When I was on 422, I should have deducted 90, well, yeah, 93 from here to get on to uh, 400, no, 329, pardon me, and that would have led me to, that would have led me to here, well, they did leave it, here, didn't it? Last piece of the puzzle, you step up into the middle, step in, stare into the glass, yeah. Yeah, I see now. If you are correct, you will meet the you will meet the necromancer. Yeah, so Zaradan Martik. Yeah, that's why it was the page of the parchment, not the actual book. How stupid of me! But then, in my defence, that was confusing. So they should have made it clearer. Yeah, they should have made it. They should have made it clearer. Uh, so I was, I was a bit stupid there, but that, that's, that shows your disadvantage of not actually having done this book before. I've never actually completed this book before. This was just like a, I was just copy, I was just following the instructions this time instead of what I do on the other books, which is following my own instructions. What I do with the other books is I go through the book myself, um, and then work out the perfect route. Um, sometimes I. And, and I look up also uh, some clues in case I'm a bit confused. So I make sure that I work out the perfect route myself and make sure it all works and everything. 
and then uh, then I do the video. So this one, I was effectively doing it blind and just following the route that I that I got off the internet. Um, and so that's what happens. I hadn't actually done that puzzle before, so that's what caused the confusion. Um, so yeah, so that's why it goes to 329. You deduct 93 from 422, and then blah blah blah. That ends the book. See, I knew that was something because I realised I hadn't actually used that deduct 192 thing, but it wasn't. It was deduct 93. Uh, oh, how annoying. Anyway, so yeah, we ended up with uh, 10 luck, 18 stamina. Didn't use any magic, there's no provisions or anything because it's a different book. Uh, rope, which we never used. Uh, not sure the use of that. Oh, and the other annoying thing was, yeah, one of the pages was missing. I apologise for that. But yeah, uh, anyway, at least I got that worked out. So you don't. So uh, ignore what I said earlier, asking for assistance about why it didn't. Um, why this uh um why you deduct 93 from the paragraph number i know that now obviously so yeah right that makes sense then it's it's sort of the battles are easy but the clues are really cryptic um it's it's a difficult book especially with the whole at the start thing where you're rolling dice to determine your fate there's a bit of there's a fair amount of luck involved in the first, well, about the first third of the book, and then it turns into skill. So it's a difficult book. It's certainly not my favourite after having played it, but it's certainly ambitious and it's very innovative. But I, I'm not entirely keen on it. It's, it's Steve Jackson's last one. Um, I do prefer Steve Jackson's style to. Uh, Ian Livingstone. Ian Livingstone just—he makes it more convoluted. Where Steve Jackson is more sort of like um, he's more, um, yeah, yeah, um, he's more innovative than Ian Livingstone. Ian Livingstone just puts uh, uh, stupid items to get, which will ine inevitably miss. Um, but yeah, uh, it's uh, certainly for a game book. It's it's a nice game book. It's it's not one of those rubbish ones set in the future like. One in one in space, or one in the one in the future, or something on a desolate world, um, freeway fight, whatever it's called. The only modern one I always say is House of Hell, uh, set in modern times. It's the only good one uh, set in the modern modern times. The rest of them, I I don't really like them. The modern ones, the uh, uh, fighting fantasy to me is is the goblins and the orcs and stuff and the magic. Anyway, yeah, so that's that game book done. Thank you very much for watching. Um, next video series is going to be either Ease the Vanished Omens or Renegade, depending on which one I can actually... Pra I need to practice at both of them. Um, Renegade needs a fair amount of practice. Um, and Ease the Vanished Omens is another RPG. I need a lot of practice. <sighs> yeah, um, yeah. so Ease the Vanished Omens at, and or... Well, it'll be either... I'll do them both, but... The next one will either be one of them, depending on which one I feel like. Um, yeah, either Renegade will probably take one or two videos. Ease will probably take at least six videos, I, could, I, I would say. Probably more, depending on how lost I get. Um, yeah, thanks for watching Let's Play Creature of Havoc. In the next, vid uh, next video will be those two. So, thanks again and goodbye.